versus Beast. And uh, <laughs> he plays it in that way. He really thinks of it as trying to tame uh, the fox. Right, right. So he, he like, will sort of make you think the things you want to do won't work. And then he just plays off that. He sort of is a control style Marth in a certain sense, too. Right, right. Yeah. Off to a pretty good start is yeah. La Luna. Yeah, leaving just enough empty space for Professor Keen to whiff some moves. Oof. Strong forward smash. Yeah. Non-tipper, but still kills. Not the greatest DI of all time. Definitely not the greatest of all time. <laughs> all right. Dash, dash attack. attack. Yes. So see, this is what, exactly what I'm talking about. He spent the whole last stock convincing Professor Peen that coming forward would get him hit, and then he dash attacks to catch dash back. Right, right. Like, how does, he, how does the moon instantly know that this is the moment he's going to switch his strategy? He hasn't played this guy recently. Right, right. It's just incredible that uh, he can yeah. do that. It must be something about the way he moves that, like, will coerce someone to switch their game plan. Yeah. And great Ops attack on the right side there to keep La Luna living for now. Okay, goes for another down tilt. Unfortunate that he missed his wave dash right there, <laughs> but still in pretty good shape. Uh, yeah, ready for the slide off the platform. Able to get the forward smash. Two forward smashes, two stocks for La Luna. Yeah. One slash, one kill. Oh, another forward smash. And let's see what he can do with this. Not too much. Thought he might go for an up air there, but opts for back air. Okay, waiting for the shield drop. Throws out an up tilt. And I think the up tilt was rather safe from a uh, shield drop back air if it were to hit on shield too. So, uh -huh. nice counterplay. Oh. All right. And, okay. A little too early with the down air. Yeah, he was expecting maybe a high angle there. That was a definitely a very uh, thin one. Yeah. I suppose. Shallow angle. Sharp angle. That's the one. Yeah. Acute. That was acute angle. <laughs> but yeah, um, Professor Bean not able to get too much going so far. I mean, the only kill has been La Luna killing himself. <laughs> so. Yeah, and La Luna definitely uh, very good edge guarding so far. And like I yeah. said, he's just Professor Peen at this point. So he's been shown that he can't come forward and that he can't come back. And this is where La Luna really starts to shine. Like, where do you go? Do you just stand still? Like, that's not going to work either. Yeah. Okay, La Luna finds his way to a platform and back on stage. Let's get a grab. I'm pretty sure, yeah, Wave Shadow Smash just kills. Instead, he gambles with a down throw. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, a small optimization Professor Peen can make, and those do add up over time. Right, right. Powerful forward smash. Uh, catch Professor Peen jumping to the side platform. And he's in control once again. La Luna really going to work. La Luna, um, overall, we talked about his story, was... Top 10 in contention for top 10, what, two years ago or something? Yeah, he wasn't uh, far off. He was uh, at least top 15. And then I think a mix of Mexico and Overwatch happened. <laughs> oh, I didn't uh, know he played Overwatch. Ooh, he, nice. he was a Mercy uh, that eventually an Ana main when it came out. But uh, he wasn't like super in Overwatch, but he just enjoyed it. I just mean like other things were happening in his life. Right, right, right. Um, and he sort of like, I'm not going to say he fell off, but he certainly wasn't hot on the chase of the top players. Right, right. And like now he's kind of like making his way back. Like we've yeah. seen improvements from him in recent memory. He was uh, disapp not disappointing his fans, but everyone knew he could do more than what he was. Yeah, he was just not living up to his potential. Um, and we all kind of felt that. Great first stock from Professor Peen with these shines, uh, getting that early kill. But yeah, La Luna, I think he's starting to sort of get back to the form that we came to expect. Like, yes. when, like when he beat Levin and Evo and stuff like that, he just established such high standards for how good he was. Um, I, I feel like it all started, uh, it, I don't know if it was two Smash Cons ago or one, but he had that really close set with Mewtwo King where like, oh, he yeah. almost should have won. And I think right. he almost beat Mango 2 at the same tournament or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So like, after that, like that has to be devastating. Like You're right there, and then you just barely don't make it. And then the Summer of Smash is almost over. Right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah, he had a great tournament last week. Top 16 at Big House. Um, yeah. And unfortunately for him, ran into the Plup loser's bracket run. Which was just a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Um, Plup obviously getting all the way to second place after starting in uh, round one losers of top 64 because of that upset by Bananas. And it's just Bananas. Ooh, nice. Nice little shine there from Professor Peen. So despite the overwhelming amount of neutral interactions that la luna has won this is a tie game because of a few shines yes it is the story a tale of two shine games as well. yeah <laughs> and 
And uh, Tail of many slices and edge guards from Maluna puts him up one stock here on Dreamland. Yep. Dreamland, uh, for a very long time, thought of as the strongest stage for Fox in this matchup, mainly because they had thought of the weak as the weakest stage for Marth. Right, right. Um, as well. These days, Marth's, um, you know, finding their. Their, their footing here, not hating it as much as I think they once did. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of the same thing as the the Falcon Fountain thing earlier that I mentioned. Like, Mars just get taken here so often that they're starting to get comfortable with it. Yeah, you have to learn what you do have and uh, what you usually have that doesn't quite work out uh, to the same regard. Right. Okay. Nice edge guard from Professor Peen. Last stock. I mean, one more shine game. We've yeah, seen a couple I mean, of already, right? If he can make that happen again, then. That's that's a great look for him, but he's just trying to win it, win it outright. It looks like good movement from Professor Peen, but might be too little, too late. Yeah, first dolphin slash not quite connecting. Definitely would have been it. And Professor Peen is on the move now. Yeah, got La Luna up to 64 already. Unfortunately, ends up putting himself in the corner in a sense. Yeah. yeah. Trapped by the uh, DI mix up on the throw, right. ends up getting KO'd. Yep, yep. Professor Peen, I think I am seeing a lot of forward aerials, which is not something I necessarily expect to be a problem with him, uh -huh. but maybe a little bit of undershooting to stop uh, La Luna from, you know, running and getting those dash attacks, getting yep. the big slices. Might help his case a little bit. Shine. Okay, the moon really holding his ground, not trying to be too antsy out of the corner. Okay, gets a burn, but Lavina able to grab the ledge without needing the upbeat. Wow, what a down tilt. Oh, okay, thought he would go for the upbeat. He's dead, yeah. yeah uh, you know, that's that's one thing that La Luna has not taken from Zane is that just upbeat uh, to cut off Fox's upbeat once, once it's uh, starting up like that. Yeah, and I uh, think, like, I mean, it's powerful, but I really think the angle that it hits Fox at is really what hangs him because he does not have a chance to yeah, upbeat uh, high again. Literally, if you, if you get that, you can kill Fox at, like, 20% like or less even it's, it's absurd yeah and if if he is able to like just make it back distance wise it'll probably just be a ledge still I yeah mean, okay a lot of fares from La Luna I think he expected the dash back from Professor Keen why we saw the dash attack yeah La Luna is like so Martha is a very committed gentleman ladies if you're looking for a husband this is the man for you but um, <laughs> La Luna, so a lot, well, what a lot of Mars do is they play a very actionable style, letting, right. leaving themselves open so they don't have to commit as much. Yeah, yeah. La Luna embraces that weakness of Marth and is like, I'm going to commit all the way. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, kind of just gives up that edge guard there. Not sure why he didn't go for like a down tilt or something, but... Oh, wow. Even with the kind of awkward landing on that down air, still able to connect to the forward smash. It looked like maybe uh, Professor Peen was just out of hit stun. I don't know if he had a chance to like, air dodge down or something, but I think that's his only shot of maybe getting out. Right, right. I mean, jump wasn't going to work, and neither was any move, so. Yeah, ooh. Sneaks a couple of lasers in there. Yeah, the edge guarding has not been really on point from La Luna so far. Yeah, Professor Peen with a slight lead in this game. Not able to close that one out. He does right yeah. there with a forward smash. Nice. Nicely done from Professor Peen. Looks like it might be that shield glitch, the ADT shield, where you like try to shield and then it just you don't, don't block. Right, right. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, it's weird. Okay. Nice little combo from La Luna. See if he can finish it off strong. And he does. Yeah, very strong with a dare. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of walling action from La Luna. He sort of induces Professor Peen to try to come in, but Professor Peen is now on the offensive. Aluna taking a lot of damage. He can find himself off stage pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, beautiful. Oh, pair of Professor forwards. Peen in a terrible spot, and he just throws the game away. <laughs> Unfortunate for he, Professor Peen. Went for wall jump shine after that? I believe that's what happened. Yeah, I don't know why. He was in such a good spot to just wrap that game up if he just stayed on the stage.